We've been given unbelievable access to cover some of the beautiful constructions here at Weta Workshop on Ghost in the Shell. And when I say unfettered access, I mean we've been able to get all the way inside of these props. Um, specifically, Norm's wife Danica has gotten inside uh, the thermoptic suit. Now, when Major goes invisible in Ghost in the Shell, she gets into this thermoptic suit, and so has Danica. Uh, Holy cow! Yeah. <laughs> um, Flo is the, uh, the, the project lead on this, is that Hi. correct? That's right, oh, that's right. right. Can yeah. you talk to me about this costume? As far as we're aware, no one before has done a full hero suit uh, out of silicon like this. Why silicon? Silicon just has an amazing texture and finish and stretch that you just don't get from foam latex or from any fabric. It's really otherworldly and quite technologically advanced in appearance and we could get these incredible details right into the costume, you know, I would never have been able to do this with any, any other material. Unbelievable. Yeah. It's multiple castings because yeah. I see different colors. There's fabric there, there's co-molding, a huge amount of processes and problem solving. Yeah, even different uh, different types of silicon. You can see here we have the softer silicon and a firmer silicon for the uh, pauldrons around the shoulders. And full marks to you, Danica, for being willing to get into this. Thank you very much. Um, did it take a, a team of people yanking and... Yes. <laughs> it's beautiful how it moves. I'm seeing very little wrinkling. So it, you have magnets in some of this? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can see to hold Major's pauldrons down to the suit here. So the torso section mm -hmm. and the arms and legs are separate. Oh. They're two separate pieces. Okay. So they're fastened with... Oh. Little magnets. magnetic fasteners, oh, yeah, which allow the sleeve to rotate. You can move your arm around and it stays in place really beautifully. Wow. Yeah. And that's always a really hard part to get right on a costume, yeah. The shoulder. Yeah. You just don't know what you're going to get out of a mold, you know, and yeah. especially a giant one piece mold like this torso section yeah. was with one seam. There's a <laughs> lot of room for it to go wrong. It's um, a testament to the mold department. Oh, we've got such an awesome team here and they did an incredible job. As you can see, you know, every now and then we'd have minor imperfections, but they're so minor. Yeah. The, uh, the biggest deal that we had with the silicon is that it um, takes on an imprint really easily. So if you were to lay it down on a table on top of something, it would sort of oh. create dents. Like when you get sleep marks on your face? Exactly, yeah. yeah. And they yeah. can be really hard to get out. So we had to store the torso section on that shaped core. Sure. To keep it perfect, yeah. How many people from start to finish had a hand working on so these So many. Suits? It's a massive team effort, yeah. Like no, no one department is responsible for this, yeah. Dozens of people? So many people, wow. yeah. It's just awesome. For the torso section, yeah. Uh, that was marked out on a polystyrene life-size mannequin that we made from a 3D scan of Scarlet. Oh, wow. And um, so we marked that out, blocked out all the lines, all the shapes. And then um, I've been making stretch garments for a really long time. So we kind of applied the stretch pattern making process to the mannequin to reduce it. Oh, right, because yeah. you, you want it to fit tightly, which That's means right. the suit has to be smaller than the Yeah, actor. yeah, so we had to reduce the buck, the core of the suit, to the size that a bathing suit would be. And we were really lucky that it worked. And from there, we took that reduced buck, that reduced core, to the 3D department. They scanned it and then transferred all the design lines that you can see yeah, yeah, yeah. onto that milled out in plasticine, a really firm plasticine, and then finished by hand, then molded, then cast. Yeah, yeah, it was how, a process. <laughs> how many of these did you, were, were you required to make? Uh, we made four hero and four stunt suits. So four suits for Scarlett mm -hmm. and four for her stunt double. And the, yeah. so am I correct in that her stunt double had to also be scanned? Was uh, there a separate process or no. was she close enough? We, she was reasonably close. Okay. We just made a few nips and tucks to fit them to either one, yeah, yeah. Um, and then uh, to get her in, is it a lot of talcum powder? Oh, there's so much talc. <laughs> <laughs> so much talc that I leave a trail of it everywhere yeah. I go. Well, the torso piece is yeah. much easier to get into. Really? Yeah, so yeah. this is separate. Oh, it's from... like a bathing suit almost? Yeah, okay. yeah. So that, that, that piece was much 
much easier. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like straight in over the head. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? It's a, yeah, so there's yeah. no zipper up the so back? So there's no zip. That was a really big thing yeah. that we had to decide was, um, oh, you can see, yeah. this is the one seam on the costume, the only seam. That's incredible. Yeah, but we didn't want to have to put any fastenings in because it would ruin the finish of the suit. Above and beyond the call of duty, no, punch in. Uh, much respect to Scarlett Johansson <laughs> for doing this. Really? Right? For whatever the duration of the shoot, because yeah, it, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a process. Can you imagine <laughs> doing this every day for a few weeks and then wearing it under hot lights while a whole crew holds booms and lights and stuff? And that's no, no, <laughs> no, not at all, not even a little bit. So, uh, great job, Scarlett. <laughs> oh yeah, great job, Scarlett. <laughs>